let's go over setting up the blueprint only dialog example project uh, for logic driver pro into an existing user project from the github page we can just go to code and download zip now i've already extracted the zip file we just downloaded on the left and on the right is a user project i've already created in unreal 426 using the third person template no other changes have been made to this project what we should do is from the zip file we extracted go under the content folder and copy both common and dialog folders in our user project let's go under content and paste the folders directly in there if you need these under a different location then what you should do is open up your project and migrate the files over or just paste them here like they are now and then open this project up and move them once Unreal is already open. That's important, otherwise references will be broken and this won't function. Let's open up the user project and we'll see the existing third person template. What we can see here under the content drawer is we have common and dialog, the folders that we copied over. Under dialog we have files and under here we have samples and template. A template is what you're going to want to reuse throughout your project. This will contain uh, different widgets and the important components. Samples is just going to be uh, like example state machines um, and, this, and an example map showing how everything is used. So if we go to the map, we can open up dialog example map. And this will show you how to use the plugin or basic examples of it. Now, if we press play and go up to someone, uh, we can't actually do anything yet. So what we're going to have to do is go under Edit, Project Settings, go under Input, and we're going to add Action Mapping. Now, right now the dialog is expecting the action key talk. So let's just make this E. And now if you press Play and press E next to someone, it will start dialog and you can go through and press E to continue dialog or select options with your mouse button. Let's cover the template layout and what each of the files do. Uh, under dialog files template, again, we can start with the components folder. And there are only two components. The standard logic driver dialog component should be added to any speaker you want to have dialog with, including your main character. The dialog manager should be treated as a singleton and placed somewhere such as the game mode. And this is primarily used just for uh, displaying the UI. Data contains a base data structure, and this is primarily used if you want to use a data table and load it during construction scripts, uh, mostly serving as an example. This isn't used very heavily. State machines are going to contain first your node classes. And this is what you're going to end up reusing quite a bit. Uh, these will be placed in a graph when you're configuring your dialog. And it consists of a dialog node base, which gets extended into a dialog node. Um, this is going to be like for standard conversations. And this would be for dialog choices. Uh, if you want like have the user respond to um, you know, what, what someone else is saying, it might be present different options to the user. And the dialog transition will be automatically placed when leaving dialog nodes. Dialog base is going to be the basically your parent state machine. The idea is you're going to create children state machines from here, uh, and that's going to be how you configure your, your dialog trees. Uh, and this is completely blank. There's nothing here. Uh, everything is set on event on state machine start. And this is where we're basically setting up who's talking and getting the dialog components from them. And this example is set up to use just two speakers. Uh, if you want to have more than two speakers, you, you have to rearrange this, maybe put like an array of other speakers uh, rather than just having two separate ones. Um, that's up to you to re-implement though. And finally, our widgets are just going to be the standard text widget to display dialogue as well as options. And so you might want to go in here and just change them, make them look a little bit nicer, fancier, uh, better suited to your project. So rather than just going over and showing what each of these do, uh, since you can just do that in the project yourself, let's just create a new dialog tree from scratch. So I'm going to go under samples to put it with the others, state machines. And these are the, all the existing ones we have so far. So let's just create a new one, new state machine. And let's call it SM our dialog. 
Now, uh, once we open him up, we're going to need to reparent this class. FSM dialog base. And this way, this will now get the other speaker and your, this speaker, and it will handle all that on state machine start for us. One thing I like to do early on is go in here and choose show inherited variables. And the reason for that is now you can get your parent, this speaker, and other speaker, and it just makes it a little bit easier to uh, drag and drop them. So let's start and just drag out and add a dialog node. Hello there. And this will be this speaker talking. And this speaker in this case is going to refer to who, who owns this dialog tree. So if we place this on an NPC, and the NPC would be the speaker, and other speaker would be our character. Afterward, let's just do some other node. Very complicated dialog. And if we leave speaker blank, uh, that's okay. It's going to just use the previous speaker. Um, for us though, we, we want it to be our character responding. And also notice that this transition is blue. Um, that is because this automatically placed our dialog transition class for us. It's smart enough to know that uh, based on transition rules. And I'm not going to really cover them too much in this video, but if you want to get an idea of what they are, if you go under the node class, in this case the dialog transition class, we have a behavior category. Under here we have allowed connections. And what we're doing here is we're setting the from state to be a dialog node base with uh, children included. This means any dialog node or dialog choice node um, that we are branching from will automatically place this transition. And it's just a way of saving time rather than having to place a transition and then setting it through the class. The other thing that we've got going for us is if you drag away from a previous dialog node, you'll see there's a dialog choice option. And this isn't normally available. And once again, this is actually some rules that are set up to prevent these from showing up from anywhere other than the uh, a previous dialog node. So that way you can't have like a normal state branch into dialog choices. You have to branch from a previous dialog node. And you can change that in the rule behavior. Uh, just like transitions, the dialog nodes have their own. In this case, the dialog choice node has its own uh, custom behavior here, allowed inbound states. And in this case, we specify it's only allowed to be placed from a dialog node. And then we also have this option checked down here to hide this as a option if you're not uh, branching from it. Let's add some really complicated choices here. Okay, so I'm just going to create some other character for us to talk to. I'll take him and copy him. And then if we go into the logic driver dialog component, and this NPC already has this, remember, so if you're using like your own NPC, your own class, you'll have to add that component in. From here, we have two options. We can change the character name. And we can specify the conversation that should play. In this case, we want our dialog. Now let's make our dialogue a little bit more complicated. Uh, we can do other things like reference other speakers within dialogue trees. So let's just drag that variable over here. And what this does is it's basically assigning a variable to this graph. Um, in this case, we're dealing with an object though. And so we need to be able to get the name of the object. Now this template already has the ability to do that. So if we open up our node base, and if we go under our variables dialog, the dialog text is what you're typing into in that graph. It's called a text graph property. And what that does is it will basically generate a full graph for you. Um, this also has a text serializer. And the text serializer, you can just type in the function name that you want to serialize your object to text. 
In this case, we called it to text. And then as an example, I'm going to open up the MPC character himself. And you'll see under here, he has a to text function. And all that's doing in this case is it's getting the dialog component and getting the character name from the dialog component. That's all this is. You could have this return something else if you want. Like maybe you have your name defined directly on your NPC, or maybe you look at it from a data table. Like as long as you have a to text pure function defined somewhere, and your dialog text variable points to that function, it will then be recognized within here. And I can show you that if we go to property graph. This is a graph that gets created from that text graph property I just showed you. It automatically takes the other speaker, calls a object to text function with this name, and this handles everything for you. This will effectively call this function here, and it will return that character's name. So when we press play now, hello there, player. Hi, our NPC, and it reads it. That's, that's all there really is to it. Let's say we want to display choices only under certain conditions. By default, what happens is once this state is hit, any choices coming out of it will be evaluated, and if their conditions are true, they will be displayed to the user. So all we need to do is make a condition false for it not to show up. Uh, for this example, let's say we want choice A to always show up and choice B to only show up once choice A has been hit. So we can just add a new variable. Let's add a, another state after choice A, a regular state. And set this to true. Now we could also have done this within the uh, choice A local graph and just have this happen like on state begin or on state end. Um, actually on state begin is where we would want it in this case. Um, the other thing we have to do in this case is go under class defaults and we're going to want to choose stop on end state. And the reason for that is these nodes have special handling in there to determine if the state machine should stop or not. Um, because this is going off into a normal state, uh, that handling won't take effect and the dialogue won't end. Uh, without this, it would kind of just keep running unless you add special logic in to stop the state machine yourself. So just telling the stop on end state is a uh, pretty good option for this. Okay, so now if we go under uh, the transition to choice B, all we have to do is really delete this. We don't really care what the class instance does in this case. Um, and just connect choice A to can enter transition. And that should be all we have to do. And then when we press play, only choice A is visible and it ends. We press them again, choice A and choice B are visible. And then finally, the last thing to go over is uh, what happens if you want to like use this with your own characters? Because in here, we're still using the sample characters that came with this uh, example. Um, so in this case, if we go under uh, world settings, this level is currently using a custom game mode, um, which is loading in our character. So let's just remove that and set it back to default. Um, so now when we press play, nothing should happen. Yeah, because we are no longer using our game mode. So to get this corrected, um, logic driver dialog game mode is what ships with the example and third person game mode is the user game mode in this case. So this would be like your game mode in your project. Uh, so if we open that up and go to full blueprint editor, let's just add in the dialogue component manager. And that, that was actually all it took to get that working. Now there's still an issue of this is loading in our third person character and not necessarily your, your character. Uh, so if we delete him and press play, now we should be the default character. And yeah, this won't work again because we don't have our own component. I'm going to open up a third person character, which is the player character that was included with this template. And all we need to do here is add in a dialog component. Input action talk, 
we'll get our component and we'll say start or continue dialog. Okay, and so the dialog works, but you'll notice the NPC is addressing us by our name and there's no longer a name here. So that's because we haven't defined our two text function yet. And so all I have to do is go back here, add in two text, make sure this is pure and make sure it returns an output of type text. And since we are using the component for the name, we'll have to define the character name here. And everything is working as it was before. Okay, hope this helps. Uh, you might want to go over these other examples that are included in this project. And they go over some other things like the rules and behavior and using data tables and string tables and construction scripts a little bit more. Uh, Feel free to stop by the Discord with any questions, and thanks for your time.